All righty. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode number two of Placed in Shelter. Again, I'll be your host, Ryan Caterizzoli. I appreciate everybody coming back from yesterday that's here and any of our newcomers, we appreciate you as well. Uh, we're going to change the format up just slightly today. We're going to clean it up. Uh, we're actually going to keep everybody muted the entire time so nobody can uh, interject at will. Um, my coworker Joe McAuliffe is actually going to be helping out and moderate the conversation today. So as I go into my topic, give my discussion, if you start to have some questions that come up, feel free on the bottom of the screen to go ahead and hit the chat button and you can place your questions right in chat. Uh, Joe will be reviewing those and he'll make a collection of those so that when it comes time for the question and answer session, he can go ahead and relay those to me. Uh, so again, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, if you are catching this on YouTube, you can always catch us live here at 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, if you want to be a part of the conversation. Uh, a couple of questions that did come through in emails, a little bit more fun. Uh, first one was, how are we dealing with the quarantine over here at the Caterizzoli household? Um, let's see, without daycare, two children under the age of three, it's proven to be more difficult uh, than I had originally anticipated. And I'm sure if you tune into more of these or catch them on YouTube, you'll eventually see them bust in the room and do things to interrupt me. Uh, my daughter will be three in, a, in May, and if quarantine lasts that long, there's a good chance she'll be celebrating it in an orphanage. Um, and then my wife being an ICU nurse, we are like uh, tier one for quarantine. So I'm pretty sure my neighbors don't even like looking at our house in fear of, of getting sick. Um, so we're dealing with it the best that we can. Uh, but moving on to today's topic is going to be merchandisers, fact or fiction. Um, so the three areas I wanna talk about are gonna be number one, what's the real ideal use for a merchandiser? Number two, what's the actual real world application? And then number three, if those two things don't meet, how can we overcome some of the problems that we have? So starting out, if I were to ask everybody in here or pull a large audience that knows what a merchandiser is and ask them how long the hold time is, I would get a slew of different answers, probably anywhere from 30 minutes up to four hours or the old adage I've heard before, it's not old until it's sold. So if you were to ask me, working at Hack Hill, what the true ideal time is, for a merchandiser, I would be looking in that 30 minute window. And you have to remember here, I'm talking about an ideal time and there's a difference between food safety and food quality. Will that product last four hours as long as the unit's operating correctly and the product went in at the right temperature? By all means, you're going to be above 140 degrees. It will be safe to eat. But every one of us here has gone out and taken a road trip before and happen to come across one of those, it's not old until it's old sandwiches, and you know what I'm talking about. What are some of the actual settings that we'll see this placed in? In my mind, I think of something like a school where I know my lunch hour is coming up. I can fill it up 15, 20 minutes beforehand, and then as the lunch rush comes through, product is coming out of the merchandiser as fast as it's going into the merchandiser. So from that standpoint, it's not sitting for very long. It's really sitting in that ideal hold situation. Um, how about a concession stand? Being able to load it up right before halftime and just saying that makes me a little depressed because, God, I miss sports. Uh, so here we are. I'm going to share a couple of quick pictures here for you so you can see what we're talking about. These are some of the merchandisers that we're talking about. You obviously have many different sizes, shapes. Here's a little bit more designer option. Here's one in action, beautiful action shot that I took from the Hagco website. Here's an elliptical design. So they come in all different sizes and shapes, but in reality, when you're talking about a base heat and overhead heat, that quality food time is going to vary. And your mileage will change based on the food product, right? A burrito with a lot of heated mass is probably gonna hold longer than a frozen microwave sandwich just because of the nature of the food product itself. So, what is a real world application? Okay, so everyone says, that's great, Ryan. You say a half an hour, but we all know in the real world, we're putting these into places like convenience stores where the product is sitting for a lot longer. What is the norm? And the norm there is to, to expect one of these to hold for four hours. So again, just remember the difference between food quality and food safety. Um, so that's the biggest difference. The food safety, I'm not worried about at all. It's the food quality that degrades. 
So what's actually happening is that food product sitting directly on your heated base is going to continue to cook and dry out the bottom of that bun and you tend to get very hard, very uh, dried out product from sitting on there. So knowing that that's the norm, what are some ways that we combat that and we can actually get better food quality and also extend our hold times using a merchandiser? And some of you saw the slide, I had clicked one too many. And something as simple as a bakery cooling rack that you can get pretty much anywhere rather inexpensively, you can place that in the base of one of our units, keeps the food product up so it's not touching the heated base, and that's gonna give you a longer hold time. Now, as I switch to this next picture, what you're gonna see is a HATCO unit that a lot of you have probably seen before, but there's something different about this one. And as I zoom in, we do have some custom trivets made specifically for certain items. These were created custom for customers that were asking for it. It is a more expensive option than being able to buy a bakery cooling rack, but at the same time, it is going to give you uh, a better look and feel to the unit. It's not for all of the units. It may have to be made custom with the right opportunity, but options like this are available. So with that, we're gonna wrap up the conversation. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here for a second. And we're gonna open it up to the chat. If anybody has any kind of questions, go ahead and feel free, put them in chat and we'll have Joe relay them over. <laughs> so far, we've only received one that I do not repeat, want to repeat out to the general public. Uh, well, if they can read, they can see it in the chat. I'll feel free to not answer that one. Um, okay, I, I should rephrase this. Moving forward, let's ask questions that are somewhat related to the current topic. If we don't have any, that's okay. I might have nailed it. I might have done a really good job covering most of the key points. Um, so if anybody doesn't have a question related to it, would Hacko ever consider built-in timers on any of the series of merchandisers? Um, that's a great question. The problem becomes with timers, um, if you have a three-tier unit, and depending upon the size of the product, how will we know when to time each one of the products? Most of the time, what I see done in the field, every product ends up getting one of the time stamps. It's a sticker of some sort that shows when it went on there, so they have an idea of what products need to get pulled. Uh, you'd have to have too many timers. Now, having said that, for the right customer, a lot of the new touchscreen controls that Hack has been bringing out do offer touchscreen uh, uh, timer capabilities, such as the new drawer warmer controller. Um, uh, so that will give you the ability to have some timers, but you'll still be limited to most likely about eight timers. So you won't be able to time each and every sandwich that goes on there. Good question. Any other questions? Uh, have you heard anything about not allowing doors on merchandisers in, in the near future? Obviously, things are changing by the minute. Um, actually, that's a really good question because it's going to segue into my conversation for tomorrow, which is about the air curtains. I don't know what the future is going to hold. Um, if that is an issue and we completely forget the fact that I have to touch the door handle just to get in the store and I'm not worried about a door being on the merchandiser, we will cross that bridge when we get there. Fortunately enough for Hatco, we are in a position where I do have a merchandising air curtain, which would qualify and no longer have doors, but still give you the quality hold time. And again, we'll talk about that tomorrow. That was, uh, you stole my thunder, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, here we go, Nick. Is there a merchandiser accessory catalog or resource out there? Uh, I get feedback from Z-Store customers that they like to see more detailed info and price tag molding. Uh, that's a good question. We do have some of the information inside of our price list. You can see an options area where I'll give you the uh, option number that you can choose with different options that are on there. For example, the trivet that I just showed you though is not in there. So the best thing to do would be talk to your regional sales manager. They're going to have a lot of the answers and if they don't, they can reach out to other people and see if they've done something custom for a customer that isn't proprietary. That's something they could offer your customer. Uh, for example, I'm working right now on a flip sign holder that works on the purpose of putting a magnetic strip on. So then you just flip it from day part to, uh, you know, day part to mor or morning breakfast to day part without having to actually pull any signage off. You just simply flip it. So there are some new stuff uh, coming out there as well. Uh, Penguin, what is your favorite merchandiser Hacko makes and why? 
Uh, once again, I'm actually going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, the heated air curtain really is the best, in my opinion, because it gives you the best of both worlds. But again, you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Carol, does food hold better or worse in foam or wrap packages? That's a great question. Um, we have studies that we've done. I don't know if foam was one of them, but I know we've done paper, we've done foil, and we've done cardboard. And you can see how the heat penetrates differently on each one of those. For example, a lot of people think that foil would be one of the best wrappers to put it in. But in reality, it actually deflects a lot of the infrared coming in. Um, so it wasn't holding quite as well. Uh, so we do have that information. If you need it, shoot me an email. We can get that to you. Um, but I don't know about foam. I would have to look at that. Uh, and once again, it's kind of like how long is a piece of string. You have to consider what's being placed inside. You know, if something has a ton of mass that was heated up, we know that it was at the right temperature, that's going to hold better than, again, like a frozen sandwich that we microwave that has a lot of that directed energy and then it dissipates rather quickly. Excellent questions. Anybody else? Well, that is great. With that, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Like I said, we want to keep this short and sweet. Oh, wait, wait. One last one came in. Does Mark Pumphrey wish he never moved to Milwaukee? That is an excellent question. And although I heard from Lauren the other day, the weather was rather terrible uh, in Massachusetts. So we're 70 degrees and sunny. It's been the nicest day we've had. So he may have a differing opinion today than he would have uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and without that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I do like to leave on a couple of fun jokes here. Uh, this is one of my favorites, day two without sports. Uh, I found a young lady sitting on my couch yesterday. Apparently, she's my wife, and she seems nice. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, this one hits home. A couple of weeks of isolation with the family. What on earth can go wrong? If you all know the movie. And last but not least, there's two types of people in the world. And you can tell probably which one the HACO person is. I'm going with the Corona card. So once again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Again, if you're catching this on YouTube, you can always catch us live at 3 p.m. Hit the bell notification to be notified every time that we do send videos. Uh, and then please email me your questions, any kind of topics you'd like to hear. The more interaction we have from you, the better this is going to be. And with that, that wraps episode two. Thanks, everybody.